What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Basement Show. We got a great interview for you today. We got Jerry Ma, a fellow New Yorker, who's going to talk to us about his new Kickstarter, The Monkey King. And our man, Alan, one of the best Pete's Basement fans of all time who set this whole thing up. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Salud. What's up, Pete? What's up? <laughs> oh, man. So, Jerry, welcome to the show, man. I really like this idea now the benefits from the kickstarter a lot of it are going to stores in chinatown which is really cool we're going to talk about that in a little bit but your opening for the kickstarter says and i'm going to quote you right here the tale of the monkey king is one that has been told for generations i don't actually know the tale of the monkey king and i bet a lot of pete's basement fans don't either so tell us about the original story and how you've adapted it to a modern new york setting of course. So the Monkey King is basically China's answer to Spider-Man. If you, he's like the first Asian superhero. He's a mythical character. It's basically like Thor, but for for the Chinese, uh, the Monkey King. The original tale is he's essentially he's an immortal. He's a prankster. Uh, he's kind of like the god of mischief, but not in a bad way. In like a wise ass way. Mm -hmm. And he is a Buddhist monk of all things. So in the original story, China is falling apart. And the emperor of China decides that he just wants to eradicate China altogether. So the god, the goddess of mercy, begs the, the the emperor to just give it give it a chance. And can we send this one monk to the west to journey to India, journey, uh, make their journey west because they've heard of this thing called Buddhism. So if they send this monk out west, he can learn about Buddhism, and on his journey, he'll learn a, more about self discovery and enlightenment bring those teachings back to China and save China from itself. But they realize that this journey is too hard to do on their own. So the monk is tasked with finding three people to help him, which is the Monkey King, Pig Seed, and Sandy. So the Monkey King, you can just do a quick Netflix search, Amazon Prime, whatever it is. It's free domain. So if you decide that you want to do a Monkey King comic tomorrow or a movie, TV show, whatever it is, podcast, you can do it. You have every right to do it. So. The Monkey King gets rebooted at a minimum three times a year, whether it's book, uh, comic, TV, or, or movies, or cartoons, or video games at this point. You know? I was going to say, like, yo, just from your story, I'm a Final Fantasy nerd from way yeah, back. This, absolutely. this sounds like a role-playing game waiting to happen. So, I mean, like, the Monkey King, he wears his headpiece, and every time he has a sinful thought, it tightens around his head to, keep, <laughs> to make sure that he always does the right thing. So when I actually back in 2020, January 2020, the one like one of two things I got to do in 2020 was I had an art show at Pearl River Mart, which is like an iconic Chinatown store. At that show, I did a series of drawings that was based on the Monkey King in Chinatown, like 80s, 90s in New York. And everyone was asking me like, oh, are you going to do a comic on it? And at the moment, I, at that time, I had no idea, no inclination that I was going to do one. But as you know, the lockdown comes... Uh, you know, we're stuck at home. I'm like, well, fuck, I think I've got plenty of time nowadays. So here comes the book. And I remember setting up the art show and they had a few young people working at the store in the gallery that helped me set up. And they never saw The Monkey King. They never read it, saw it, anything. And they knew about how it's always rebooted. But the reboots, they tend to get, they, they make it glossier. So they, they, they give The Monkey King more like intricate armor. They focus more on the Kung Fu part of it. They try to make it more violent. And I understand all that. They're trying to make it edgy and, and more violent. And I, I get why they want to do that, but they're kind of losing the gist of the actual story. So in, in my version of this uh, story, in a long answer, sorry about how long it's right. taken here. Don't be sorry. This, um, this is the answer we want. We want the whole explanation. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is I want to remind the reader that it's more about fantasy, adventure, and magic. There is, of course, going to be action. It's a comic book, and I'm not stupid. And I love Kung Fu movies. Trust me on this one. You know? <laughs> but I also wanted to update it. I put it in New York today. So they're going from Chinatown, New York, to Chinatown, San Francisco. That's their journey west. They're going to hit every Chinatown along the way to find self-enlightenment and bring it back to New York, Chinatown, to save New York from itself. Rather than choosing which armor you know, helps protect them from damage more, they try to match which pair of Nikes match their hoodie more. You know, there's graffiti, there's karaoke, they, they ride giant pigeons, you know, they, they fish for giant arowana in the sky. 
it's a lot wackier. It's a lot more fun, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, hopefully people can see that for themselves. I, I, I do hope people take the time to check the book out. I, I like to think it's a little bit of a original concept for something that's been redone so often. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that sounds really awesome. I love the idea of, you know, kind of gathering your party. Like I said, I'm a role-playing game fan from a long time ago. So I even if you. I'm reading it or playing <laughs> it, I love stuff like that. And like just gathering your party, meeting new people and everything yeah. that does the monk meet them as he goes along or are they all already together and then they so go. So in, in, in my version, uh, you know, because the original story, they're all ma male characters. And uh -huh. I just thought in today's, you know, climate, it's probably better to add a couple females. So yeah, you can break it up. I made uh, the monk, Tripitaka, a female, and I also made Pigsy, who is generally, you know, you think of a big fat guy. I thought it'd be kind of cool to make Pigsy a girl. <laughs> and she's still kind of sexy. Honestly, I think she's kind of sexy, but she's tough and, and she's got style and it's cool, you know? Yo, bro, um, thick is in, man. I'm <laughs> all for it. Dude. Well, I try to think of this story. It's like a blend. It's as if if Stranger Things and Cowboy Bebop had a baby, this is what I made. Is it going to be a self-contained story, or like like this is the Kickstarter that you're you're booting up right now? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So this is a self-contained story. This this journey it's actually about Tripitaka coming to New York Chinatown to find to locate Monkey, Pixie, and Sandy, and it, it's going to end with them beginning their journey west. Um, it, so it can stand alone on its own, but based off the success of this campaign, uh, we'll determine if I do another book or not. And everything's kind of pointing that I will at, the, at this point. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, potential spoiler alert for those of you who are just watching now, uh, the Kickstarter is already successful. So at this point, it can only get better from here. And you can definitely count on the aid of the Peach Basement show. I love the variant covers of this and i hope you guys will too and you'll be able to kick in on this but like i mean at this point uh i'm i'm very picky and choosy with what comics that i want to get uh i got into digital stuff i admit and it's easier on comiXology if i just have to go like through my ipad course, or whatever but course. so i can now limit my funding for stuff that i really want to buy physically and one of the things that i really have gotten into is and it, marvel is especially just full of this stuff is new york city covers whether it's the photo covers that there was like a submariner one there's a daredevil one and you've got a great art print of the new york city subway system and then you've got the standard cover that you've done and then there's the variant cover that looks uh, almost like it's in chinatown and then there's a whole other variant cover so the, tell yeah. us about that stuff I so love variant uh, covers. I'm, I'm pretty excited about these variant covers you know i hate talking about my own work I no, love no, no. writing about my friends. That's all right. We want to hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> so I am pumped. I'm thrilled. I My two uh, variant covers are from Jim Chung, who is one of the co-creators of the Young Avengers. He's the current artist of Spawn. He's worked on Justice League. I mean, he's done every major title for Marvel and DC, and now Image. Uh, I think, in my opinion, Jim Chung, like, doing a project with the Monkey King, releasing the Kickstarter during Asian Heritage Month, you got to come correct. You got to get you got to get a Chinese American artist. So Jim Chung to me, I mean, I, I kind of think he's like the guy, you know, mm. um, then not to be outdone, but that, that New York city cover you're talking about is by, well, one of my like comic heroes, Jeff Darrow. He is, if you're not familiar with his work, I mean, maybe you've heard of the movie, the matrix. He's the designer of everything in the matrix. He's I think I've uh, seen that once or twice. So he does all the designs for the Wachowskis. He's also done this comic called Hard Boiled with Frank Miller, uh, yeah. Shaolin Cowboy, Big Guy, Rusty the Boy Robot. Uh, I mean, to me, he, he's done so many covers for, I think his biggest cover thing was for uh, Deadpool. He did a bunch of covers on Deadpool. And just talking to Jeff, you know, he, he called me, he lives in France. So, you know, he called me at super weird times, like calls me like at four or five in the morning. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, I was just thinking, are you okay if I draw like Canal Street, you know? And, I just kind of want to draw like some crazy New York stuff and, you know, have the Monkey King doing something crazy in Chinatown. I was like, that's, that sounds perfect. Jeff. I was like, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, to say the least, I am very proud of those two variant covers. 
Jeff is the man. He's getting Dave Stewart to be the colorist. J Dave Stewart is like, I mean, he's like an Eisner Award winning colorist. <laughs> so he also, he called me and said, you know, I just hope you it's okay. Like, do you mind if I ask my friend Dave to color it? Because I was like, I was like, like, who's Dave? He's like, Dave Stewart. I was like, oh, you're talking about the Dave Stewart? I was like, uh, yeah, Jeff, I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got the funding for the Kickstarter and any of the stretch goals are now being put toward small yeah. businesses okay. in Chinatown. Tell us what you're so doing with this that. This campaign was funded under 48 hours, which was just amazing to me because I, I was kind of scared that we wouldn't get funded at all. Um, that being said, Part of uh, the, the funding goes towards paying the talent, uh, not myself, but guys that like Jeff and Jim Chung, Alan, you know, guys that all helped me out in this campaign. And uh, back in March, as you pro maybe you heard, there was a shooting in uh, Atlanta, Georgia at the spa where like eight people were, were killed and stuff. Yeah. Uh, as an Asian American, I was kind of emotional after I got a little angry, a little upset. So back in March, for the last two weeks of March, I decided, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to donate, you know, all the, the money from my online sales to uh, stop Asian hate. And, you know, look, man, I'm not like a big deal or anything. So it's not like I, I, I'm not, I don't have the ability to raise like tens of thousands of dollars. So in those two weeks, I raised like 2,500 bucks. And for me, that, that's kind of a lot of money. And I was proud of that money. And when I hit donate, it felt good for the two seconds when I hit enter, you know. But immediately after you hit enter, you're kind of like, where did my money just go? Mm -hmm. So I was talking to Jeff about it and he was like, you know, I think it's cool that you're trying to overpay everyone, but I kind of feel like Jeff is like, you know, I've made a lot of money off the Asian community, off Asian culture. So I think it's only right after I saw what you did, I think I should donate my money to stopping Asian hate. And I was like, Jeff, that's amazing. But like I said, it felt a little hollow after I hit enter. So I was like, is it cool? Call me crazy. I've never been the best decision maker. I'm pretty emotional with my decision making, you know. Um, and I was like, "What do you think if I just like, you know, go to Chinatown and, and literally give them cash myself?" And he just started laughing. He's like, "If you think that's cool, he's like, I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. he's like, if you want to do that, he's like, I'm all for it, you know." Um, so that's how that began. And then when I started telling the rest of the team, like Alan here, Alan has been working more than anyone on this campaign. I, I mean that with all sincerity. Alan is the reason why this campaign got funded in under 48 hours. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Alan is, he hates taking any credit. He has done <laughs> everything. He's made the video. He's, he's outreached to every podcast like yourself, every you know uh, website, every blog, everything. He, it's, this, he is literally the reason why we got funded in under 48 hours. And I've been dying to pay Alan, and he refused to take payment. And he said, well, if you're going to pay me, I'd rather you just donate it to Stop Asian Hate. So then this whole thing just started going. And now we're just, like I said, today. This, so this morning, I went to Chinatown, and I hand-delivered $250 to eight different small businesses, which, That's I mean, great. it's 2000 bucks. It doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it, it was pretty cool. You know, like, these guys at first, they thought I was a little crazy because they thought, like, there was a catch. Right, you know, right. They, they were waiting, like, so if you give me money, like, what do I got to do? I was like, right. what do you got to do? I was like. I just hope that you can stay in business, you know, just stay open and keep serving me whenever I come in, you know, <laughs> they were like, I mean, I went to a liquor, I like to me. So my family has a small business in New York and we're suffering right now. So I know exactly how hard it is for small businesses here in New York. And as an Asian American, we are obviously facing a lot of racism now. So there's, we have a double layer of, of hurdles to, to get over. It's a, the pandemic and B the racism. So Chinatown is like a ghost town. And I went in there and like, I, you know, I didn't go to like the big restaurants. I went to this one old lady that makes fried dumplings by herself all day long, every single day. She thought like I was fucking out of my mind. <laughs> I went to a liquor store that I usually shop at. They wanted to give me free booze. I'm like that dude. No, I was like, that defeats the purpose of me giving you money. You know, right. Like they, they all insist on giving me free shit. And I was like, no man, like I'm, I'm, I'm paying for whatever I take. You know? <laughs> so we finished at Hopkey, this great restaurant that that uh, actually a lot of comic creators like to go to like me and my friend cliff chang like going there a lot and they were just like well lunch is on us it, it, they brought out all these dishes for us i'm like no like i don't want it like we are going to pay for this lunch they're like oh well then let's drink you know like, <laughs> we'll take the drinks no problem. there you go <laughs> <laughs> you know it was funny because like i went to a supermarket on canal street that my mom used to take me to when i was like 10 years old um they totally thought i was out of my mind and they were so suspicious but I was with Roger Clark from NY1 News, and 
they realized they, who Roger was and they're fans of Roger. Mm. So then they were like, oh, so this is real. <laughs> and then they stopped talking to me in Chinese. They started talking to Roger like, so what the fuck's going on? Why is this guy giving us money? You know? <laughs> 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 but uh, it, was, it, was cool. it was a lot of fun. It was cool. You know, we, we went to everything from like a supermarket to a liquor store to a bar to a dumpling lady to a restaurant. You know, like we just, it was totally random extreme small businesses in new york and uh i don't know it felt good man you know like i felt like we you know gave them a little hope gave them a little happiness for a little bit they some of them broke down and were telling us how tough it's been you know so it was just great to i don't know just do our part you know like the dumpling lady she saw me walking around afterwards and she was like how can i like pay you back i was like no i was like just next time i come like have some dumplings ready you know right <laughs> i don't blame them for being a little on guard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't expect any less, but it was cool to see them change from being suspicious to just actually being happy, you know, and it was great to, you know, it was just for a couple minutes to be there. And I told him like, look, I, I know this money, it's not changing your business, not saving your business, but what it represents is you're not forgotten. Uh, we do have NY one news here. We want to spotlight your business. You know, uh, Rogers, actually, it's going to be running on Monday morning. It's going to be a two minute uh, video. And we're going to talk about each business that we went to. And, you know, these are businesses that aren't often talked about. The dumpling lady doesn't get talked about. She's there by herself, an old lady, you know. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure, you know, if, if the $250 is one thing, hopefully that, that helps them out for, for today's business. But I think talking about these businesses, putting up on our social media, reminding people that they're there. Hopefully it gets a few people in the doors. And I think that's the real good of it. Mm -hmm. you know? Our stretch goals are all about giving money back to small business in Chinatown. People can still like back the campaign, get the book and give back to the Chinatown community. I mean, I gave $2,000 in cash today. You know, the campaign's still going on. I hope I get the opportunity to go get back out there and give some more. It's that simple. And you actually <laughs> changed your stretch goals so more money gets in the hands of Chinatown. Can you talk a little bit about that? Ooh, yeah, okay. so uh, the stretch goals at first, I, I didn't like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I, so I just set some numbers, you know. Um, but the good thing about KSR is I can do whatever the fuck I want. So, <laughs> you know, like there's no rules, you know. Um, so I get to literally, if I decide that, you know what, I'm going to make it easier to, to reach the stretch goals, I'm making it easier. And just like that, I did it. So, you know. So you're able to edit the campaign mid-campaign? Yeah, of course. Oh, that's I mean, cool. I didn't know that. To me, you know. Yeah. So uh, as long as you don't take away anything. Mm -hmm. You can add on, so you can add on more stretch goals, which is exactly what I did. If we can raise some more money, then I'm happy. I'm happily fucking. I mean, we have uh, as of right now, there's three more stretch goals. Uh, if we actually hit like one or two more of those, I'm just going to change and add more and more, so that hopefully, look, the more stretch goals I add, literally, I'm not making that money. Right. <laughs> like I'm literally not making that money, and that is a okay by me. Because and this is all going into the hands of people who yeah. really could potentially use it. Yeah, you know, man, it's been a rough year. You know that. We all know yeah. how, how hard it's been. So, like, why not get back? It's a fucking comic book. Yeah. Comic, comic book is supposed to make people happy. I think this is the best way to make people happy, you know? If that's not a reason enough, like, to get in on this Kickstarter, everybody out there in Pete's Basement Land, not only are you getting an awesome book and some really awesome rewards, but you also get to be a part of something way bigger than any of us is to give back to communities that have been really hammered by this whole pandemic lockdown and other bullshit yeah, situations so, that are going on. So I gave a, a red envelope, a hongbao, which is you just give that on Chinese New Year. And it's, mm. it's typically filled with some money. So I put $250 cash in there and I wrote in each hongbao, in each red envelope, I wrote a letter thanking the business for sticking around, for you know persevering through this tough year. And that this money, it's coming from all the backers of the comic. Like, it's not just for me. This is from everyone that's backed the book. And, like, I remember the guy from the liquor store. He was maybe the coolest person we met today. And he wanted to give me a $200 bottle of liquor for free. I'm like, no! <laughs> like, that's, that doesn't make any sense, you know? And he read the letter, and he was just like, he's like, wait a minute. He's like, is this your money? Or, like, whose money am I getting right now, you know? I was like, you're getting this. This money is coming from everyone that, that that you know that backed this comic. Like, it's coming from this comic book, you know. And he's like, a comic book? 
you know, he's a little bit older, so he's kind of trying to wrap his brain around what the fuck is going on, you know? He's like, a comic book is giving me money. He's like, a comic book brought the news station here to talk about my business? I'm like, yeah, man, I like drinking. I've been, I've been buying booze for years, you know? And he was just like, a comic book. And then he just like, he hugged me. And he was just like, he, then he just broke down. He's like, business fucking sucks. And he went on this, you know, tirade, just telling me how bad it is. And then he was just like, but this is like, it's like, this makes it worth it. It's like, this is why I've stuck around, you know? He's like, I didn't know this was going to happen. He's like, this is amazing. And that was just so cool. And he's, cause he's like this bigger kind of, he's a tough guy. Mm. He's clearly like a tough guy. And to see him get like all emo on me was fucking fantastic. <laughs> Man, I, that's got to feel great. That's that's such a great feeling. I can't wait to do that shit again. I hope I get to do it again. <laughs> you are definitely going to get to do it again because there's a you got a lot of other awesome rewards in this Kickstarter besides just dope-ass variant covers. You've even got like original art. You've got postcards. Tell us about some of the other stuff we can get because, I mean, I'm a, I'm a comic fan through and through. I love getting my grubby mitts on stuff. Well, yeah, obviously original art speaks to itself. Uh, the postcards, on the other hand, are pretty cool because – the postcards are part of the add-on, so you, you can back any reward. You can get the digital, you know, copy, and then you can add on the postcard set. The mm -hmm. reason why the postcard set is kind of near and dear to me, that that postcard set, all those artworks, that, that's from the art show that inspired this book. So, like I said, back in January 2020, I had an art show at the Pearl River Mart Gallery. Pearl River, they fell victim to the pandemic. They went out of business, but then they reopened a new store, like, last week. So obviously I went to Pearl River today to give them some money and they're taking that money and they're putting it towards the new gallery to help promote new up and coming Asian American artists. That's great. Um, Pearl River gave me a shot. Like without, without Pearl River, this book wouldn't be happening. So they, they gave me an opportunity to show my work there in their gallery. Um, and I did, like I said, it was, it was all pieces based on the monkey King in Chinatown, New York. And based off of that show, that's what inspired this book. So that postcard set is how this all came to be. So that's why it means something to me. You know? And hopefully it will reflect to uh, everyone reading the book. The postcard was definitely a set that I was going to add on. Like, obviously, <laughs> I'm getting the variant covers. That was That's always what I look for. And when I saw the postcards, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to wind up adding those later. Because like, even from just a picture of you know the – the whole kind of grouping, I was like, these look really dope. And like I said, I love New York stuff. So I would just like put those all together in like a whole. Well, you're a New York guy. Party. You know the yeah. Chinatown Arcade, right? Chinatown Fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that that's in there. That's in the book. I actually put that, you know, they, they walk by that arcade in the book mm. because that's like, come on, man. That's Chinatown, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, now, speaking of stuff in the book, and this is also one of the first things that I look for anytime I look at a Kickstarter. And I didn't see it, and I know that you said that this book ends with them all getting together, the parties together, and now they're going to journey west to California. Uh, just, you know, just throwing it out there, uh, I always like to chime in on a Kickstarter if I can get my own charming visage drawn into the book somewhere. And hang the cost, this is just something that I love seeing because I'm a bit of an egotist, obviously. And <laughs> I've had a podcast for 13 years. I have to love the sound of my own voice at least a little bit. So, yeah, I, you know, just, so, just an idea. It's something I would be that, interested in the future. I, I know a lot of Kickstarters have, like, draw me in it for X amount of dollars. And, you know, I, I felt a little guilty offering that because, well, who the hell am I? No one wants, no one cares about me drawing them into the book. But um, I was talking about it with a friend just last night. And I think because the last scene, if I can spoil this for everyone, they're going to be at the Canal Street uh, subway stop. And it's going to be on the platform where they're waiting for the train. And I haven't drawn the last, like, two or three pages yet. Uh, I'm getting there. And my friend was like, you know what? He's like, you, you got to do you got to draw people in waiting on the platform with the monkey king for that subway to get, you know, to go West. I was like, fuck shit. I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I think I'm going to add it on. Like it's going to be an added on reward uh, at the end of this, this coming weekend. So I'm in, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think the only, the fair, the only fair thing to do is if I, when I do do that, um, I think anyone that backs it, not only will they get drawn into the book, but I'm going to send them like a print of that page as well. So they, they can hang it up and, you know, see themselves waiting on the subway, on the subway platform with the monkey king. I, I think it'll be pretty fun. You know, 
Oh, dude, I'm so in on this. <laughs> oh, hell yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Pete, honestly, you got to let me uh, – you, you got to wear a Pete's Basement T-shirt. And – you got to have like a backpack with some toys sticking out of it. You know? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like I'm all about like, I, I love the, the little details, you know, so you, you got to do that. I'm asking if you actually are going to do that and no pressure. Oh, but if you do I'm, do no, that. I'm definitely doing it, brother. I, there's no you know, doubt. Have he man and Skeletor, one on each shoulder. You know? <laughs> the funny thing is, is that's not too far off from how high school Pete would have looked coming, waiting for the train at Chinatown to go home because there was mad toy stores and stuff that like I was probably buying crazy shit at Elizabeth Street Mall. And like, you know, it, it was probably like some Final Fantasy figures because Seven was mad popular at the time or whatever. But yeah, I'm just, I'll just throw whatever I got in there. I actually have uh, an Optimus Prime right here next to me. Like he's just like chilling with me on, <laughs> on the round table. Something I did want gloss over that I wanted to come back to. You are the writer and artist of this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, sadly. I'm not I know you don't like talking about yourself, but I'm going to force you to do it. I, I grew up, like most comic fans, fantasizing and dreaming about working for Marvel and DC. I am grateful for the Kickstarter platform because Kickstarter tells you, you if you don't believe in something, what the hell are you doing, right? You want to do it, do it. You know, like, here's your chance. Fucking do it yourself. Let's see what you got, you know? So here we go. You know, and I think it's going pretty well so far. And Honestly, you know, like the, <laughs> this is one of many Kickstarter interviews that I've done and I love doing these things. Like, this is always what The Basement Show has been about, is highlighting indie creators and so many great stories and great art. There's so so many talented people out there. Mm -hmm. It's not just mine. Like, if, you, if you're watching this, listening to this, please check out Kickstarter for the other comics. Back one of them. Don't back mine. Back one of the other ones, man. I'm already funded. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Fund some of the other. Make sure other people get their books made because there's a lot of talented people out there that deserve an opportunity too. You know, um, I am so grateful for Kickstarter. I'm so grateful for people like Alan that just, like I said, this could not be possible without Alan. Uh, I feel like Alan's got to say some more because he's <laughs> done so much for this campaign. So Alan, sorry, I'm going to put you on. Well, the floor is you yours, brother. Speak up about Kickstarter. How your thoughts on Kickstarter and indie comics, things like that. Um, I'm going to disagree with you about. Indie comics to me, like indie comics were always cool. I remember uh, high school picking up a free issue of Milk and Cheese by Evan Dorkin. <laughs> yes. Oh and, like, man. Just I mean, like they were like just like two drunk milk and cheese cartons that were always. <laughs> For anybody drunk. that doesn't know, like it's literally a carton of milk and a block of cheese, like anthropomorphized. If, if that's a word, I'm making that shit up. I got a bone to pick with Evan Dorkin, though. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's go over right here on Pete's when basement. One of the first fucking comic conventions I ever went to, I, Evan Dorkin was an artist out. And I, I was a young, stupid, dipshit kid. And I asked him for a drawing. And he just whipped out milk and cheese on a 9 by 12 bristle that I didn't even have paper. So I just asked him for a drawing, like, whatever, right? He does this fucking awesome drawing of milk and cheese charging out of the paper. And they're saying, burn your comics. <laughs> I got that. That was my first original art ever. And I was like, fuck, I'm hooked. Now I've been collecting art ever since I was <laughs> <I'm> goddamn try. <laughs> so look, look what came out of the indie market. I mean, Mirage Studios, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started off as an indie book, a nice yeah, black and white violent book. To me, Kickstarter is the new direct market. That's where you're reaching your fans. And I, I like Kickstarter. I like backing projects. Kickstarter in its purest form is a beautiful thing. It just gives an opportunity for anyone to, to get their book done, and, or not just their book, any their, their project done, you know? We want to know how people can find the Monkey King besides Kickstarter. Does it have an Instagram, a Twitter? What's your Instagram and Twitter? So this way people can find you and see everything else that you've done and learn more about the Monkey King, bro. My Instagram and Twitter, it's the same handle. It's uh, Epic Props, which is just my website, epicprops.com. Uh, I would say I'm most active on Instagram. I try to post pretty regularly. I try to have fun with it. It's pretty cool. You know, you get to see whatever artwork I'm working on and mm -hmm. every once in a while throwing a good uh, restaurant that I've eaten at or a good drunk moment I had. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot like the Pete's Basement's Instagram, I might add. Just, and it, uh, you know, I love what people have been using, like the six panel strip on Instagram where yeah. you swipe it. I'm like, this is awesome. 
Yeah, it's fine. Like, no, a little, like a little comic or something up that you can just follow along with. Yeah, well, because if you, you if you uh, um, space them correctly, they they swipe you know seamlessly. So it looks like just one really long panel. And it, yeah, it's actually really cool. I, I started doing that for a, uh, a, a this like Instagram comic I'm doing with a friend of mine. Uh, it's about food. It's a dim sum gang. It's a different thing altogether. Which is hilarious, though. The pitch yeah. that dude. You have to pitch that. It's hilarious. Yeah, wait, a, the dim sum gang. Do you know how many people like like they tell me like <laughs> when we before the vid happened, like people at my job would be like, "Yo, we're going to dim sum on Sunday. You want to come?" I'm like, "What? I mean, what time?" And they're like, "Oh, like probably like eleven o'clock noon." I'm like. I'm gonna be hung over, man. I, I can't make it like that. <laughs> sounds delicious, but I, I can't do that. But like, I would tell them about this comic. What What's the dim sum gang, bro? I mean, dim sum for anyone that doesn't know, it's essentially Chinese tapas, you know? Um, you go in there typically, yeah, like 11 in the morning to like one or two in the afternoon. And it's great because it's not meant for like one or two people. You go with at least three or four guys or people, whoever. And you get essentially you get to order small amounts of any food you want, and it's pretty cheap. You know, it's just like a few dollars each dish. And uh, so, what me and my my friend Parry, he's he's an actor. He's from uh, he's a regular on General Hospital, and uh, he's actually the star of the first all Asian American cast movie in America, which is Better Luck Tomorrow. Mm. Um, his name is Parry Shen. He's the writer of it, and we just do this little strip uh, about these dim sum characters, the actual food. And how they're going to travel the world and learn about different cultures through food, but it's pretty wacky and pretty funny. And the art so, is just awesome, and the coloring on it. <laughs> so the characters are like the dim sum yeah. is the food, actual oh, like right. dumplings and things. Like that. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so before we get out of here, bro, what else have you done? Because I know that Monkey King is not your first foray into the comics world. Well, I've done uh, th this comic called Legend. I kickstarted. That was my first kickstarted book. I make the brunt of my living doing graphic design. So, like, I'm right now in the middle of doing a project for Vibe magazine in Hong Kong, uh, like a limited edition hip hop CD. I, I do the package design and illustration for it. I'm doing a line of T-shirts for the NBPA in China, which is the National Basketball Players Association. Uh, meaning, you ever see those like corny commercials with like Grant Hill? The basketball player and he's got his number his jersey on it's got everything except the team name on it so mm -hmm. I, I get to use any player in nba i just don't get to use their team name uh, okay. but i'm doing a, a few different lines of t-shirts for them that's pretty exciting uh, but yeah then you know i, I try to uh with um i'm on a i'm actually going to be hopping onto a, a twitch stream with bernard chang in, in a little bit so we, we do this stream every tuesday night and it's about this thing we do on wednesdays but for comic wednesday so we do this thing called Panel to Panel, which is the Dim Sum Gang, uh, where we get all these artists to contribute. Every week, we try to do one panel for an original story every week. And then we also, on what Comic Wednesdays, we do this thing called Bow the Sketches, which we pick a topic every Wednesday, and we get all these artists to contribute, and everyone's welcome to join in. And we, the core guys, which is Bernard Chang, Sean Chen, Annie McDonald, Ken Newton, Glenn Urieta, and myself, we repost everyone's drawings. So we just try to, you know, build a comic community with, within each other, uh, try to promote everyone, try to give encouragement to, you know, other aspiring artists as well. And uh, where do people cool. find that? Uh, just on Instagram, just hashtag battle the sketches and hashtag panel the panel. Awesome. So literally, like, I'm going to be jumping onto Bernard's uh, Twitch stream right after this. Uh, I'm not, even, it's just whatever, just search Bernard Chang uh, on Twitch. But uh, it's, it's every Tuesday night around like 10 p.m. Eastern time. Awesome. Yeah, I have no um, idea how to use Twitch, but I'm sure there's yeah, a lot of people out there who know exactly what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about like, oh, I'm a little old and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so, but somebody out there will figure it out and then somebody will tell me. <laughs> Jerry, man, I wish you the best of luck. I want to see all of them stretch goals get hit and all of those awesome stores in Chinatown get more and more money. I wish you the best of luck with the future of the Monkey King comics. Thanks for coming on the show. Alan, thanks for hooking this up. And thanks for all the unsung stuff that you've obviously done behind the scenes that you don't want to take credit for. Jerry, thanks for talking about yourself, even though you didn't want to. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a great show. And you can count on the aid of the Pete's Basement show. And I hope the aid of the Pete's Basement community in furthering this Kickstarter. Salute, Thank gentlemen. Thank you so much, Pete. You're the best, man. Seriously. It means thanks. everything. 
Eh, I have my moments. <laughs> Guys, you know how to hit us up. Questions at PeachBasement.com, Facebook.com, forward slash Pete's Basement, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, at Pete's Basement. Let us know what you're up to. Let us know if you're contributing to the Monkey King and any other Kickstarter that you find it might be cool to look at because we're all about celebrating the indie creators here. And, hell, just let us know what you're up to, like, in the quarantine and in the lockdown and in vid life. And... I promise the basement show is on its way back and you will see us very soon back at the round table. That's a guarantee. See you guys very soon. Take care. Peach basement is copyrighted 2021 ripped productions. All rights reserved. So go fuck yourself. Yeah, man. This is the these, these are the coolest stretch goals ever. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. You know, these are the fucking coolest stretch goals ever.